Hello. Hello. I'm Ben. And I'm Ben. I listened to that. Oh my God. <laughs> well, well, well. What are you doing here? What are you doing? Oh my goodness, we are here today with Neighbours Royalty. I can barely speak. So a big welcome to um, Lucinda Cowden, aka Melanie Pearson, aka Melanie Pearson Mango, Melanie Rebecca. Who knows? What are we today? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I like to think Melanie goes by Pearson. She's held on to her family name. I think she's like alive. I was like that. I I, I was married and, and I didn't take anybody else's name. I'm, I'm me. No, Ooh. Mel's Mel. Yeah. Mel's Mel Pearson. I'm me. Melanie. One of a kind. Oh, uh, yeah, you are. Yes. Regardless. Regardless of whoever she is with at that current particular time. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Who has been filling your head with malicious gossip? It was your birthday the other day. Happy birthday. Yes. Thank you so much. I had such uh, a beautiful birthday. We had really pretty gorgeous weather here, which is highly unusual for April. We normally It's normally quite cold and miserable in uh, Melbourne in at the end of April anyway. Um, and, yeah, we have had, because uh, I quite conveniently have a public holiday right after my birthday. It's like my mama organised it like that so we could all get over the fact that we've had ma way too many charities on my birthday. <laughs> so um, yeah, so there's a public holiday called Anzac Day, which is actually a really important um, holiday here. And um, But, yeah, so I, so I had kind of like a four-day weekend because there was the weekend and then everyone took Monday off because Tuesday was a public holiday. So you back at work about two minutes when you've got a day off already. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, oh, I know, man. I know. So that's that's very well worked out, and particularly after my birthday. So yeah, so we had good weather. We had um, yeah, we had some fam come down, and and um, we had a nice little time. Thank you very much for asking. So you're back at work. I am. What's it like being back on set? Exciting. It's exciting. Everybody is excited. And things are the same and different again, if you know what I mean. So every time I go back, it's the same but different. Well, this takes me back. So... <laughs> well, you, to be fair, how many times have you come back now, Lucinda? You're like... A few. I, well, a, a number. Voila, here she is. So each time it's it's... It's kind of like you go, oh yeah, it's the same. It's the same building, but every time it's different. So, so the sets are a bit different. So good to have the house back in order. Yes, after the world's longest renovation. Um, we've got some different people there. Some it's, new um, faces. It's different, but the same. New faces, <laughs> old faces, um, new old faces. <laughs> old new faces. There's many, many permutations on faces there, <laughs> and um, yeah, it's it's it's. Has Mrs. Everyone Punt been on the Botox style. while you've been away? Is that what you're trying to say? Vera Punt's had a good old um, fillers. Hey, remember me? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> You'll keep. Um, no, no, it's just yeah, it's just um. It's, yeah, there's people that uh, have returned that weren't there before, that were there previous, if you know what I mean. So there's 
and there's lots of there's lots of new people. Who the hell are you? And um and there's Amazon and there's um the sets look different and everything's had a bit of a zhuzh up and it's exciting. Everyone's excited. <gasps> because they're very excited. We can't wait to see to see what's in store. But we well, do have yeah. a bone to pick, Lucinda. Oh. Oh. You have known since before Christmas that you were yep. coming back. And there, the fandom was falling apart, championing for Mel to come back, and you just sat there silently. Whilst we were all out with our placards. You were doing oh. bring Mel, bring back bring Mel. 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 Bring I was like, Mel. <laughs> How do you feel about that? I know, it was... Uh... It was really terrible. I, the only person I had, I told like three people. I had to tell my mum because she's ninety years old, and if she died, I wanted her to know that I was gainfully employed. Um, <laughs> 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 I obviously had to tell my partner and you know our offspring and the like. Um, but yeah, but besides that, I just kept going. I don't know. I don't know, like that, which just wasn't washing with people they were going well you know does that mean if you can't say something does that mean you've got something to say and I was like <laughs> I feel like you're keeping something from me um <clears throat> so I just made strange faces for uh, feels like five months or something um but yeah it's um so yes so I've known but it's there's some storyline things that sort of you know they think that they wanted to keep uh that guessing but I don't know I don't know why I don't know why they haven't released them all together there's there's method behind the madness that's all I'll say okay so yeah they're le releasing it in dribs and drabs and, and I don't know you know they obviously had to get the as we call them the big four banks <laughs> <laughs> but we had to get them knowing that they were there so that had to be announced but then you know we had the next four banks <laughs> and so, yeah, so it's just been, you know, like that. And and, and it, it was just great for me because, you know, I never really had like a full-time contract previously, if you know what I mean. I was just coming in guesty, guesty, guesty. At the end, I did, but only until right until the end. Otherwise, I was still never really knew um, how long I was going to be there. So I still kept my drama teaching job and stuff like that on Saturdays because I was not ever sure that I was staying here for any length of time so um yes so yeah so yes so I am back now and I can say that I am back and I'm back full time and I'm main cast and it's yeah. yes Mission oh that's brilliant news brilliant news I think that's an exclusive. Brand new, hot off the press. Yeah, everyone's like, is it a little bit? Is it a big bit? Is it? I is know. It yes. Are you back no, in the no, no. Are you back in the opening titles? I will be in opening titles. I will be in all of those sorts of things. Because yeah, no, I'm got a nice big contract. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Well, I think that means Nathan's is over. There's nothing to campaign about anymore. We're we're done. Oh that's no. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much drama. Okay. So much drama. Cut the drama. Tell me what's going on. Oh, I can't there's, there's so much drama. So much drama for Mel. It's a very rough world outside this cloistered little coffee shop. Okay. So it's, there's just there's there's you guys are gonna you you're gonna love it. You're gonna hate oh. it and love it. You're gonna love it and hate it. You're gonna there's gonna be bits you're gonna hate. <laughs> Well, it's been a rough night. <laughs> and it's going to be all very exciting. Oh, my God. I can't call because, obviously, we got beamed into Australian television from on the no, live on the set on that first day. And they presented Ryan to us. And we were all like, don't you be messing with our Mel. I know you told me. You know how passionate we get. <laughs> um, well, you know. I'm not saying that you're not going to have more words to say to him. Oh, okay. I'm not saying that. Okay, she's not. I'm so confused. <laughs> no, well, you know, it's going to be a while until it's on. So yeah, there's a lot we've got to keep under wraps because yeah. 
um, we're going to be filming for about four months, I think, before we start going on air. Okay. <clears throat> so well, we'll get a fair bit in the can. Yeah, yeah. So so it'll be all, and, and it's been a funny week um, this last week because normally the way we film things, we do all our location first and then we do our studio. But because this first week is the first week ever, there's bits of studio and bits of location and, and we're working on a lot of scripts and it's it's all a bit cray cray. So it was a bit of a crazy week. It was a bit of a crazy week. Oh, now who sounds like a nutcase? And of course you've got, you know, a lot of new people who are like, you do how much a day? What? <laughs> no. I thought you did like three or four scenes a day. It was like, mm, no, I think you'll find we do like mm, 18 scenes a day, you know. <clears throat> well, so those four people, you know, their minds, you could see their their eyes just going, ah, oh, my God, what have I got myself into? Yeah. So because I don't think many, I mean, I don't think, besides Home and Away, there's probably nothing else that works that fast here. No. Mm. Yeah. So wow. it's a bit of a shock to the system. Yeah. And I think, you know, when you're starting something up, it, you need a, you know, like anything, it's 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 been dormant for, you know, eight months or so. So yeah. to get everything started up and, and also you've got a whole lot of new people who don't know the way of, you know, the juggernaut that is Neighbours and how to film it, you know. Because it's oh, It sounded like you deserve that four-day weekend, isn't it? Oh, she needed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to tell my eyes have been spinning. They're still in that slightly cray-cray state. <laughs> it may have had something to do with the drinks at the birthday, though. Oh, oh this is disgusting. Well, it's not <clears throat> going to win any gold medals, but hey, how's the warm feeling in your guts? Eh? Feels pretty good, yeah? <laughs> Listen... Any opportunity to, um, you know, crack open a Chablis? Sparkling, lovely, sparkling grapes from our lovely, shiny country. Cheers. Cheers. But obviously you got to announce your news yourself. I the... did, but it was the weirdest thing. You wait all this time and then you do it yourself? It was like... <laughs> it's like, oh, I thought, Jen, I thought you were going to do it. Oh, okay. Oh, I'll do it. All right. <laughs> But that must have been really special to be able to kind of the build up to that and then it being the, the big announcement compared to... It was. Yeah. It was because we had like, because uh, at the Hamer Hall gig, I think we had, it was a, I think it was about three hours of meet and greets that we did. And of course, everybody was just, you know, are you coming back? Are you coming back? Are you coming back? And I was like, well, there could be a little announcement this evening, you know, sort of <laughs> one way or another. I was trying not to give everything away. But yeah, <clears throat> so so yeah, it was good. It was good because I just think it would have been too hard to do that show without being announced. I think that would have been a bit weird. Yeah, because at least and, Anne Charleston, you know, I mean, Madge is dead, so <laughs> there's no. I mean, I know they have brought stranger things have happened, but. <laughs> As the only surviving kind of cast member that couldn't have come back. Yeah. And then there was going to be me going, well, I'm half dead, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was it like representing the cast on the Australian leg of the tour and, and the finale of the tour as well? It was great. It was gorgeous. It was gorgeous. It was fantastic. All the meet and greets were fantastic. It was so lovely to see all of these gorgeous people and for them to tell us, you know, what neighbours meant to them. And so it was a really beautiful, it was like just getting a huge hug, if you know what I mean. It was just that everybody just saying, oh, we have our dinner with you and we've missed you all so much. And, you know, it was just lovely. It was gorgeous. The fans are gorgeous. They're adorable. I know. Hello. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Yeah, no, they're they're lovely, and and it was really it was really heartfelt, and it was really um, touching. I felt, you know, it was just like, oh god, okay. So there's a really good reason why we do this because it means something for people. Because you know, 
I think particularly here we get into the headspace that we're kind of making the show for the UK. I think we were in that headspace. And yeah. so it's really nice to connect with Australian fans because you kind of think, oh, it's, you know, we're really only really making it for the UK. But that it's not going to be like that now, which is going to be great because we're back on the main channel, I believe, back on 10 yeah. uh, in Australia, which I think will make a really big difference because being on 10 Peach in regional areas, I don't think they've got some of those stations. So mm -hmm. I think it's really important, for, particularly for those regional areas, which, of course, you know, Australia is one large country with a lot of regions. Um, I think it's really important for them to have it as well, to see, you know, themselves reflected and stuff. So, um, so yeah, so, so I think it's going to be good that it's going to be on 10 Peach. And, you know, for you, Ben Fenlon, it's going to Canada. Yes. I don't so regret moving here. <laughs> I mean, I'm still not impressed. I'm still not impressed. I, I, I love that it's coming to Canada, but in being over there. I know, I know. I'll be leading the fan club over here. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, I think we need someone to to raise the charge in Canada. And I think Richie Morris is in Canada. Oh, okay. I'll get stalking. Yeah, yeah I think he could definitely stalk him. Sorry, Richie. <laughs> Are you serious? Just get my adorable. mouth. He's so adorable. <laughs> Terribly stalkable. I mean, <laughs> super friendly. And just, he likes chocolate. So if you give him chocolate, he'll do anything. I'm a, I've just got to pull out. Hi, Richie. Hi, Likes Richie. chocolate. <laughs> what, me curly whirly? An unfortunate and desperate creature. Come this way, Richie, with the lovely chocolate. <laughs> um, yeah, so I believe that he's in Canada. So oh. so between the two of you, I expect you to, you know, sort them out. They're going to be huge. In Canada. The viewing figures are going to be huge over here. Trust me. Yeah. I'll have all the devices going. <laughs> and also the terribly exciting news that we've got the beautiful Misha Barton in the show. Have you I met her yet? Know. Yeah. Oh. She's gorgeous. She's like totally down to earth lovely not starry not you know out of my way she's not you know she's not any she's just a lovely down-to-earth gorgeous woman yay <laughs> um, but also as well as actually just on that note about kind of people coming into the show obviously guy pierce mm. came back mm. what was that like working with guy pierce now as kind of a movie, you know, a famous movie star, Hollywood right star. Thing about Guy is that he is exactly the same as he always was, totally and utterly unaffected by fame. And he's just a he's just a gorgeous human being. And so he just bought his gorgeous human beingness and. And it was really funny because, you know, there was all the sort of, you know, secret, secret Kylie and Jason being here and none of us were allowed to know and there was all that. And then, you know, Guy just walks in, like, and he does the promos and he does the, you know, he's there to sign autographs. He's just, <clears throat> he's just proper. Yeah. yeah. And really he cool. stole the show, really, from, from Kylie and Jason. He stole the show from them, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, he had some words for a start. <laughs> <laughs> but also from a fan perspective, like he, what he gave in his yeah. performance, he didn't come in as Guy Pierce. He came back as Mike. No, he came back as Mike, absolutely, and he did my laugh. He did your laugh. <laughs> you mean Melanie? <gasps> he did that, and it was like, oh my god. Do you remember Melanie? Melanie. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. That's the one. <laughs> I, she probably doesn't laugh like that anymore, though. Well. Did you have to coach him on that? Did you have to do, like, some one-on-one -on -one coaching on how no, to do that? No, he needed nothing. He needed wow. nothing from me. He's a consummate professional. Uh, you know, I feel like I can deliver anything if it's well, well written and, um, and I understand the character. He had heard it so many times, it was obviously still in his dreams, my love. <laughs> Wanting him. <laughs> oh, I love it. So it's just right there for him. You can just pull it out of the sky. There it is. Yep. 
What else do you need? I can do everybody. I can still hear Madge's voice. Charlene! <laughs> so, yes, no, it was, we had, you know, there was those scenes. We had Paul Keane, Jeff Payne, Ian Smith, Guy Pearce, you know, Annie Jones, me. It was Steph. And it was like mind melt. It was an absolute mind melt. And, you know, Harold comes out with the with the hose. It was just like it was like the 1980s, but we were all old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was, that was incredible. <laughs> we had the surprise return of um, Shazza as well, Jessica Mushkamp. The beautiful Jessica Muskamp, yes. Muskamp. Yes, just via video link, yes. Hi, Mel. It's me, Shazza. So did you know that that was who you were reacting to when you were watching it or was that kind no, of... No, we didn't have any of the people. We had some of the people. Who did we have? We had, um, there, was some, there was some that we had for that video, but um, it changed a lot between what we saw and what we saw on the night. So there was a whole lot of people. I think we had Kimmy, we had Miss Kimmy and we had... Um, couple of other people but yeah it was it was just there was a whole lot of nothing that we were all just going ah. <laughs> to. <laughs> who would you have liked to have seen in that video from back in Melanie's old days I would have liked to have seen the Blakeney twins oh, yes yeah I would have seen that would have been good that would have been good because they were a big part of Mel's life um oh who else Oh, maybe um, Richard Norton and Jeremy Angerson from back in those days. I'm actually looking at a picture. Ashley Paskey. Oh. Ashley Paskey. Oh, uh, yeah. He, played Max. he was beautiful. Uh, and, and, of course, Gemma, who is Beth Buchanan, who is Roxy's mum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah. So, there's, uh, yeah, there's a few that would have been, that would have been nice. Besides, you know, Bouncer and, and Helen Daniels couldn't come back. Oh, so, yes, but yes, yes. Yeah. But, yeah, no, it was kind of, yeah, there were a lot more people there for, for Tony because, obviously, he's been there rather a long time. Just yeah. the 28 years. Yeah. A little bit. Well, I tell you what, your, like, Melanie's laugh is just as famous as Tony's mullet. I'm putting it out there. Putting it out there. <laughs> what well, obviously some of the I friends that Melanie's had over the years, I think that was one of the loveliest things. When you look back at Melanie's trajectory through the show, she's always her friendships have always been the heart of, of who she is. You know, you had yeah, yeah. With the Blatney Twitter with, uh, with Carolina Christina, with Bronnie, um, yeah. with Sharon. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, absolutely. with Amy. And Amy, absolutely, yeah, the beautiful Jacinta Stapleton, who is so much fun to work with. She's great fun. We are going to be partners. <gasps> Howdy. Are you going to invest in the van? I'm going to up my investment to 50%. Oh, Mel, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, we get along like a house on fire. Um, so, yes, it's, can't say anything about that. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. obviously, um, yeah, and then you you met up with Jessica Mushkamp recently, wasn't it? How was it kind of spending time with her and hanging out? Because she's adorable. Yeah, really gorgeous. It's um so easy. So I like you know I didn't see Jess for I don't even know how many years, but I I remember seeing her. She came to see me in Panto when I was doing Canterbury, Panto in Canterbury which would have been, I think, 92 or 93 or something like that, like a really long time ago. Um, and then I hadn't seen her since she – oh, I spoke to her on the phone. She was on the phone to Steph in the green room, and he and Steph went, Luce, it's Jess. And I was like, oh. And so we had a chat, and it was like she's living like 20K down the road from where I live. So it was like we should – meet up and have lunch and stuff so we've had two lunches so far and each time we have lunch we just give each other information about different parts of our lives I suppose that we've missed out on and she's got three beautiful children and um yeah she just lives not far from me so 
so we try to catch up when we can and it's really easy and it's um really nice yeah and she's someone we'd love to see come back into melanie's life on the show as well like I think there's so much potential for for a shazza return so that maybe that's something we'll campaign for like yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. i think that's a great idea and it's great having having you know old people back it's great it's a great touchstone for the fans it's fantastic um you know to be able to go oh that's what so and so would look like now and that's what that's what they would be like now and that's the kind of person they'd be i, I just think that's great i love that stuff yeah yeah um, so fingers crossed fingers crossed that maybe she does putting the vibes out there anyone can make it happen you too can <laughs> <laughs> You know, you should come with me to see Madame Zolga. She is the best fortune teller in Erinsborough. 87% success rate, apparently. 95% if you don't wear shoes. Going back to the return of the show, like, can you remember what it was like finding out the news on that day that it was coming back? How did you react? Well, it was just the weirdest thing. So we, we had, a like, a WhatsApp group chat. Um, and, um, and, you know, we sort of would write stupid things and if people, you know, saw somebody else in an ad or, you know, if different people have been doing different things and so they post that and go, oh, look what so-and-so is doing. And um, Zimmer at the moment is doing one of those SAS. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, one of those things. She's yeah. so fit. <laughs> um, so so she's, she's doing one of those. And we've, so there's sort of back and forth um, had been going on somebody had a birthday and, you know, there's sort of like, you know, bits and bobs. And then <clears throat> I think it was Charlotte Chimes tech put a thing. I've just had a, I've just had a, a message from somebody who's in the know that there's going to be a big announcement about Neighbours being made today in the UK. Um, and we were like, oh, look, that's probably just to do with whether it's going on a, streaming service the old episodes might go on a streaming service or something like that and so i was quite dismissive of it i just didn't think for a minute that it meant that we were actually really coming back so that is insane um but it was quite funny everybody was chatting away in this chat group going oh no no it'll probably be with a whole lot of different people or maybe it's just with kylie and jason and mike and and, and guy and it was like it was all this sort of stuff going on everyone was just taking the piss and being funny um but there were four people that that weren't saying anything so there was nothing from ryan nothing from jackie nothing from alan fletcher who chimes in on everything <laughs> <laughs> nothing from Seth, who often chimes in on everything it's like yeah. but i hadn't really noticed that because it, there's a lot of us if you know what i mean so then april did a screenshot of a conversation that she was having with someone who worked for press in the UK saying big announcement, 10 a.m., blah, 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 about Neighbours and said definitely about new episodes. And and I was like, oh, look, this is dry. You know, mm -mm. I, was, I was a bit like, I don't think I can contemplate this because I'm going to get disappointed. If you know, you know that feeling? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, we know that feeling and, well. <laughs> I was like, I don't, just don't know whether I can... So I was watching, I was in the middle of watching Shantaram on Apple TV. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was like, I'm just going to turn my phone off. And I turned it down and I put Shantaram on and I was like, I'm not, and then all of a sudden my phone was just going, bzz, 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 bzz. and I was like, hang on, hang on. Looked at my phone and there was messages from Ryan and Jackie and the video of them going, we're back, we're back. And I was like, <laughs> oh, what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean for me? Am I going to be back? Am I going to, I don't know. I can't get excited about it. If you know what I mean? It was like, I don't know whether I'm going to be back. I don't know whether this is great. Hooray. I'm really pleased for you four. Um, <laughs> I have no idea what that means for any of the rest of us. So um, so then I probably waited about three weeks, I think, maybe a month or something like that when I got a call from my agent. And I was like, yeah, 
this is something exciting. Practically waterboarded him for information. You want to yes. come on home and aware? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> It was just really strange it was really it was because we didn't know it was like okay so if that's happening what is it going to be who, who is going to be in it and and it was sort of like <clears throat> wanted to be excited but didn't really know whether you could go there and and it was that sort of thing like I was saying like the idea of this you know there we had been to the funeral just getting over the fact that this part of our life has died and what what we're going to do with the rest of our lives and and then like i said yeah you get a postcard from the person who's died going hey i'm in paris want to come over and party <laughs> um <laughs> yes, <my laughs> oh, what, what do you think um what do you think shall we yes okay yes yes we'd love to thank you um so yeah so it was it was quite um the emotional roller coaster of of going Oh my god! Oh, but that doesn't mean me. Oh my god! But maybe it does. But what is it going to be? Um, and you know, <clears throat> so it's been like that this the whole time. It's been like crazy, and not yeah. being able to say anything was just. I'm the worst person to have to say that to because I do take these things seriously, and it's so funny because Beck just turned around to me and she went, "Oh, and I didn't tell. I told everybody. Oh, I was on the phone to my girls this morning." <laughs> 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 oh, so we need people, to get back on right. to the lowdown of the new storylines then. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do tell. So when the news dropped um, here, obviously 10 o'clock in the morning here is middle of the night in Canada. So I had a day at work of just like leaning against the wall every few minutes going... <laughs> <laughs> I was oblivious. I'm like I'm like the last person to know anything now. Like I'm just so far behind. Yeah. Like, you see, I'm first, then then Ben, then you. It's like you are you are you've moved backwards in time. Actually, I really have. Yeah, it's like I'm back in Get the back UK, eighteen, and I'm eighteen months behind neighbours. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I totally regressed. But yeah, I I when the news. Kind of, I was thinking about moving to Canada when the news kind of broke that the show was ending. And I thought, you know, it's it's kind of a a good time. That part of my life's ending. I'm going to start a new life over in Canada. And you could do what I do. Divide your time between here and there. I mean, when you get to our age. And then, oh no, like you say, oh no, we're still here. Hi. And now we're coming to Canada. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Have a film in Canada. Come to Vancouver and film. Oh my gosh! How exciting would that be? I'll I'll make you coffees and do all your kind of chores and stuff. You know. Forget For Vancouver. Free. Come back to Middlesbrough. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come back to the little theatre in Middlesbrough. Yeah. You're still. Do you know what? You're still there. There is still the program poster on the wall um, the dress circle of the theatre I was there the other night and I was like there she is <laughs> do you know that the theatre burnt down when I was there that was we were the pantomime that, that the theatre burnt down at. <laughs> Melanie says that she didn't do it oh God, I can't Me, Linda Barron and Don oh my God, what's his name? whispering the whispering Whispering Grasses. I can't. All I can think of is the name that Linda Barron called him, and it, and I can't say it because <laughs> <laughs> it's something that's probably not appropriate for your eyes. Oh, okay, that's fine. That's fine. Neither of these people are alive now, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but randomly, now yeah. your ex-husband, yes, Mark Little, is there every blinking year. How weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw him as um, Captain Hook the other year. So, yeah, it's like a, it's like a dynasty of Melanie's, you know, I've, lovers. I've mangled. 
<laughs> I'm gonna, uh, yeah, we should name it. We should rename it. They should name it the um, yes, the mangle, the 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 man well, it's the little theater, and he's Mark Little. Oh, oh. I'm changing that. I'm changing that. It's the Cowden, <laughs> the Cowden theater. <laughs> it could be this, uh, um, the mangle, the Middlesbrough mangle theater. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so, thinking back about, I guess. If you could kind of go back and relive a moment from Mel, from your experience playing Mel, which moment would you like to go back and kind of relive that moment? Oh, that's a hard one. There are many things. I think one of my favourite things was was Christina and Paul's wedding. That was really that was really fun, um, and ruining their wedding on so many different levels. The first turning up. <laughs> in her wedding dress, <laughs> I thought she forgot it. <laughs> so what do you do? You just put it on and go to the wedding. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, I mean, the thing is, is Melanie's bridesmaid dress wasn't the greatest for that wedding, so you can forgive her for putting it. Going, I'm not wearing this bag. Come on. <laughs> I know, taffeta, puffy was shocker, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Um, yes. So, so, and then getting a second go at ruining their wedding by ending up stowing away in the ship um, and ruining their honeymoon night. <laughs> Stay in the room with them. <laughs> You'd already done the jiggy jigs with Paul by that point anyway. So, you know, you're all friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would have just gone, so a threesome? <laughs> I had a threesome. No, it was um, no neighbours wasn't quite ready for a threesome in those days. Yeah, they were a bit more polyamorous these days. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it was um, that was that was really fun. There was also we did lots of fun. We did lots of fun things. We did lots of there was lots of Harold and Mel stuff that was fun that we did. There was some him trying to teach me how to sing that was hilariously bad. Lord, do a double one. <laughs> and we ended up doing tap dancing. <laughs> and and with Kelvin, I remember Kelvin. Mel's boyfriend for a while. He was such a dag. It was really great. He was so, I mean, he couldn't have been cast any better. And he was actually like that. He was like super, <laughs> super, super daggy. And there was some great stuff with the Reverend Richards as well. And who's actually still one of my best mates in the world, a guy called Anthony Fletcher, who I met there and has is still my one of my best friends. Um, so yeah, so there's been so many. And there's been great ones from recently as well, you know. Um, I love doing the stuff with the kids, um, you know, all the Nell and Mel stuff, like the Mystic Mel stuff is great fun to do. Ask Val where she hid the money. I can't find it anywhere. Rightio. <sighs> and, you know, I love working with Ryan. He's just great. We, we make each other laugh all the time and... And we have a lot of fun working together. So regardless of the storyline, we still we still enjoy hanging out together and working together on and what each other offers each other. We both yeah. like playing together. And so so if I do this, he'll do that. And it's he's just really um <clears throat> he's really playful. He's really good fun to work with. Well that that reminds me of the at the celebration tour, there was a blooper reel. And I gotta say, like 90% was just you okay. getting your line yeah <laughs> that was hilarious it was that was a real highlight of the show that was real really yeah. funny we got more blooper reels and with you still on set I'm sure there's bound to be yeah <laughs> I know yeah I know no well you know we all um we have a lot to say and, and the trouble is that Melanie has so much to say so when you're learning her lines, it's, you know, she kind of is verbose. She does have, you know, why one, why say one word when you can say 50 is pretty much the way they write Mel. 
So that means that there are, I do have a lot of words to remember. And so things go awry quite regularly. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Because, you know, I hoppity skippity over something and and I'll just go, blah, 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 blah. Help. That's like us. Yeah. Professionals, um, we're all professionals. That's what we do. What about your least favorite Mel moment? Is there a, a storyline that you kind of looked at when you saw it on the script and went, uh, not a fan of this? Um, I tell you, I was actually super uncomfortable at the beginning of the Toady and Mel stuff because there was also sort of sexy. There was all, it was all like, and I just wasn't expecting to be asked to do that stuff and I was kind of like I'm in my 50s and I don't know when I want to get my bits out and I don't know whether <laughs> anyone wants to see this and and I was a bit and because she's a lot older than him it was kind of like uh, so it yeah but I mean the great thing about Mel is that you go would she, would she do that? And then you go, yeah, actually she would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the great things about Mel is because she's quite sex positive. You know, she's she's not judgmental and she's mm. just open to everything. And She's a very broad church, isn't she? <laughs> so, yeah. So it was like, oh, I don't, you know, I, I just personally because, um, you know, the last time I'd sort of taken clothes off was I was like 23 in Neighbours, if you know what I mean, and I'd had the Harold bird watching scene where I had the, the yes. <laughs> People around here don't like being spied on. But I wasn't spying on anyone. I was photographing a bird. Oh, yes, and I know about the bird you were photographing. Who could believe that you'd be the peeping Tom, Harold? Eddie was right, you know. He said that it was the quiet ones that were always the worst. <laughs> Modesty covers over my my breasts, etc. But you know, I was quite happy to be in a bikini then and stuff like that. And I we had to do stuff like that. But I was twenty three, and you, you are more comfortable doing that. And and I was like, I, I don't really want to be, you know. <clears throat> so so a lot of the wow tiger stuff in the tiger outfit and stuff, I was a bit like, oh god, how are we gonna do that? Hey there, tiger. <laughs> but you know, just you embrace it. it. <laughs> just, just said sorry everybody middle-aged woman on set with bits out <laughs> I mean, yeah. they would they never went... have got they would never have got mrs mangle to do that would they back in the day well, she would not have done that oh mr bishop what a dreadful experience i feel i feel quite quite undone Neither not, would... not that i'm conversating you're the same age as mrs mangle <laughs> well, oh, yes. Let, yes. Would you like a shovel to dig yourself a larger hole? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Hi. <laughs> I've been sacked. <laughs> Just you and I now, Lucinda. Hurrah for that. <laughs> <laughs> The fu- Melanie future, um, what are you, I know you can't tell us anything that's going to happen, but do you have any like hopes for Melanie, anything that you would you haven't done previously that you'd like to, to, to do? I've always had an idea that I have liked, which I've kind of wanted Mel to get into the wellness area and um, making up little potions for I've kind of liked that whole idea. And then I kind of thought, wouldn't it be great if she was dosing everybody with medical marijuana and she didn't realise it and everybody was getting completely (laughs) shit-faced? Yeah. That'd be hilarious, you know. Carl with the munchies, Susan with the giggles. It's Dr Kennedy. Uh, It's it's Susan. She's acting really weird. What sort of weird? Vera Punt stumbling down the road. (laughs) <laughs> looking for a Mars bar on the side of the corner of the road. Is that a Mars bar down? Is that, is that a chocolate? Uh... Now, wait a minute, Goldilocks. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeffrey Bezos, are you listening? Yeah. Make it happen. I just think, 
I just think that that would uh, the idea of some sort of yeah, of some sort of wellness center that that is part of Lassiter's that Mel starts to um, <laughs> do people with small levels of psilocybins and medical marijuana. <laughs> Everyone's tripping. <laughs> All right. I went over the report twice last night and it's very thorough. So I actually know how much trouble we're in. There is there is a flame tree resort that was a, a set previously used before you arrived back. So, right. you know, you could resurrect the flame tree and you could run your wellness centre from there. We've yeah. also had the idea that maybe Mel should run the coffee shop and like have a room out the back for Madame Zolga telling her fortunes. Yeah. Yes, well, there's definitely sort of some more Mystic Mel would be good. But that's why I kind of thought the Mystic Mel thing could move into <clears throat> some sort of clinic or something that she works at doing, whether she's doing tarot card readings or crystal peelings mm. or or dosing people with small amounts of psilocybin. <laughs> <laughs> We're here for it. That's our next campaign, Ben. Yeah, <laughs> get neighbours high. Whoa, I'm with you. <laughs> Get everybody <laughs> totally depressed. Yes, I, know. I, I think that would be a great story life. Well, just letting them know that another coffee shop is open. Run by one of your relatives, no doubt. People have a right to know what's available to them. Do try it. I'm sure you'll agree it's better than this place. Um, and I would an area that I would love to see Mel. Uh, yeah, I just think that would be absolutely hilarious. But of course, you know, it quite possibly is still on it. I don't know what time we're going to be on, you see. But I think it's probably going to be in this sort of dinner time area, which may, may, may make that not a possibility. But I just thought that would be funny. Um, that would be, a, I think, a funny area. I'd also like to see um, some more female friendships reconnect. I think I think it would be really good for Jane and, and Mel to um, hang out more together. Oh. Um, and I think that, yeah, maybe with... Um, <clears throat> With, with Jane, you know, sort of, I, I can't say anything about her relationship, can I? But yes, um, but um, but maybe she might, maybe she might be more, yes, in that area. And, and there's going to be a few um, ructions between other people because of different, oh God, no, I can't even start. Look, I just have to stop. <laughs> What do you mean you can't? It's just too hard. <laughs> well, we, we've kind of always talked about the fact that, especially with that relationship with Jane, is exploring that your step family, you know, if you think about it, we've oh, well, got exactly. Toby, yeah. And he's yes. got bound to have about 12 kids now. Um, yes. You know, guy could pop back with Lana. There's such a lovely, already existing history of family that yeah. needs to be explored. And I think that would yeah. be incredible. Why don't you do the right thing, Dad? Hey? Ask me I need to marry you. Yeah, yeah. I think there's there's those things which are, will be explored, which hopefully, yeah. And I think, um, yeah, and I think it would be good for um, Mel and, <clears throat> and Paul to acknowledge their history more. So, um, I think that would be a nice thing to do as well. So to to reconnect with those OG characters that you know were, that we were um, that we were with. I didn't have much to do with Jane back in the day, but because we were both Mangles, there was de there's definitely I think there's definitely um, a relationship there to get some um, yeah some use out of definitely. Yeah. Because whilst yeah. I get that when Melanie came back, the, the, the humour of it was Paul heard the laugh and ran. What's wrong? Hmm? No, 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 nothing, nothing. I just uh, don't ask me hearing things. But yeah. actually, Paul and Melanie were actually friends back in the day. Yeah. You know, that she worked for him for a long time. Go on, I could tell you all the goss about Paul in the early days. It could be a real girl fest. And there was a there was a proper relationship there. He, you know, he wasn't terrified. He didn't think she was a, you know, insane, crazy person. There was a there was there was a friendship and a love there for each other in a, yeah, in that kind of way. Yeah, and 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 he's kind of dismissed that over time, but there's been a couple of nice scenes. There's been a couple of nice little scenes where they've 
helped each other out when they both found themselves on the outer, um, either in the waterhole or the coffee shop, and they've had nice little chats with each other and sort of understood where the other one's coming from because they know their history. And and I think things like that, are, I think it's important to um, remember to reconnect those characters um, and let them have those little moments of like, oh, God, yeah, okay, so I'm in the shit again with this because I always do this. And he's like, well, I'm in the shit again with this because I always do this. So I dated a couple of bosses. Doesn't always end up in disaster. Look at you and me. We're still friends. <laughs> we hardly dated. Mm. And there's a nice sort of um, <clears throat> um, kind of like a, just an understanding of the fact that neither, both of them are very imperfect characters, but imperfect people that um, that tend to yeah. make similar mistakes over and over again. I'm sure it's all going to work out fine. You think so? Yeah, yeah, of course. I've, I've loved it when they've clashed as well, like that yeah. exchange when... Um, Paul found out about Toadie and Melanie and said was there something about um, all the granny stuff. Have he did a hard that. time. Yeah. yeah, must have a hard time keeping her man up. I thought that was. Oh yes, that's right. Poor Therese. The great thing about having a young lover is that they have so much stamina. I mean, even I have a hard time keeping up with my man, whereas poor Therese, she probably has a hard time keeping her man up. Yeah, no, that was nice. And a little twirl and sachet, sachet, sachet. <laughs> what I thought was great as well was, um, now not a lot of people can stand up to Susan Kennedy and get away yes. with it. In the past, we've seen, I mean, the downfall of the Parker family. I mean, Susan ran over their daughter and Miranda went around and gave her what for and we all went, no, 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 you don't say that to Susie Q. Right. But yet, yet Melanie rocked in there and just went hell for leather at Susan and Carl for their meddling ways. I can't stand petty gossip. Maybe you should have thought of that before you decided to ruin my life. Melanie, I am so sorry for everything. No, you're not. We yes. were all behind Melanie. And that says something. Yeah, yeah, no, she did. She went and tore strips, didn't she? You, you know, think he right? deserves better? No. Well, he does deserve better. Better friends. Not ones that snoop and judge and scheme all for their own entertainment. You make me sick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was good. And I like the fact that she's feisty. She's definitely, she always had that. Melanie, would you notify the personnel officer of this vacancy? Do it yourself, Paul, and make that two vacancies. I'm out of here. Though, when she was young, she just, you know, there was such a part of her that just didn't care, if you know what I mean, which is what I think people like about her. Yeah. You know, she's just got that, like, <clears throat> I'm just going to say this because I don't think this is right. Yeah. And and she's also been, like, she's also been pretty full on tearing strips off Toadie a couple of times as well. Fine. You want an apology? I am sorry I was honest about my role in your life. I'm sorry that I didn't want to be kept a secret. And I am sorry that you feel a need to speak to me as if I am a child. Happy? So, um, yes, with the rules. Oh. All lies, all lies, that's what I'm saying. One of you was teetering on Team Rose, and I know that it's not Ben Fenland. Yeah, I know. I know, he, he sucked me in. He sucked me in. That <laughs> and he, said, he said, that Ben Bone, he, he's on Team Rose. He? Like, he's what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job he's in Canada, because I tell you what. No! <laughs> that's why he's in Canada. Apparently, that's why he had to go. Yeah. <laughs> Lucinda knows the real deal. That's the truth. I'm scared of you, Dan. Who, <laughs> me? Couldn't handle it anymore. Couldn't handle it anymore. No. End of story. So besides Neighbours, is there anything else coming up for Lucinda that that's uh, that we can all look forward to as fans? Uh, hmm. Yeah, I did a little... Um, I did a little web series ages ago which was really funny called how to talk australians 
Mm -hmm. uh, which was about uh, all of these uh, Indian people that were trying to assimilate in Australia. And I played this really horrible bogan mum character. <laughs> and they're making a little feat. They've made a little feature of it. So I got a little bit in that. So um, I don't know when that's going to come out because we've only just done it. So, um, yeah, so that's that's going to be around and about and hopefully will be funny <laughs> when you make comedies. Hopefully they will be funny. Yeah. yeah, you know when you have to, like, explain your jokes, you're in a bit of trouble? I don't know because oh. that's the joy of having a live audience when you do comedy. You know whether or not it's funny. Whereas yeah. when you go and make a film... You go. I have no idea. We'll get you. We'll, we'll laugh. Know. We'll laugh. <laughs> we'll. <laughs> well, that won't be very helpful, will it, Ben? Because you'll just be <laughs> laughing because I've told you to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I do as I'm told. <laughs> That's a good thing. Thank you so much for today. A um, no, really, because I have to say thank you to you two for just always being there and supporting me and being so um, up for Mel and up for her crazy antics and, you know, it's made a huge difference to me to have you guys in my corner. So, oh. I know you love me. How could you not? I'm adorable. Thank you. You're welcome. Anytime. Yeah, we yeah. are. We've been team Mel since day one and um, the fact you're back in the show <laughs> is just it's 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 made um it's made our lives. We're like, oh yeah. yay, yay, yay. Well, there's so much to look forward to. Yeah, we'll sit back and watch. Um, it's gonna be amazing. Your jaws are gonna drop to the floor. It's gonna be exciting stuff. Okay. Oh, no, I want to know. <laughs> no, and I can't tell you. I'm so sorry. I wish I could. Let's end this end this recording now, Ben, and we'll talk off camera. Yeah, Lucinda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>